Here we are in the battery shed, charging about 50 amps, which is about two and a half kilowatts. Anyway, what we're looking at today is this extra set of batteries here. Picked these up a while ago. Um, they were all even as far as specific gravity concerns, but they were all quite low. So uh, they've been on trickle charge for about three months through that bulb. But what I wanted to show you was uh, what happens when you trickle charge batteries that have come out of forklift service? What tends to happen is as they charge up really well and they have done for three months so that's brought them right up the specific gravity tends to go through the ceiling so let's have a look so we just grab the hydrometer and check what's going on Let's just put a jug there and zoom in. As you can see, it's right at the top of the green. So the acid is incredibly strong. And it should be between the white and the green. Now the thing is here is that um, first of all to get loads of power out of a battery the stronger the acid the higher the voltage and uh, the more power it can store. So imagine this you've got batteries with quite strong acid on them and then the forklift hire company gets a, a phone call from Joe Bloggs veg company forklift's gone flat so the engineers go down there and not only do they quickly boost the the batteries but they draw out a load of acid and put some ultra strong acid in there to get the forklift going again and then it all gets forgotten and the upshot of that is that if you've got ultra strong acid in the lead acid batteries it causes when the batteries are charged up something called positive pole corrosion which is exactly what it says the positive poles corrode and it tends to push the top of the case up um, on the positive and that's why you can tell the positive uh, buzz bar and the post start to expand so for wind and solar applications where sort of volume of batteries etc etc is less important than durability the idea would be to bring the acid specific gravity when fully charged down to something like 1250 or 1.250 so that's what we're going to do we're going to draw some acid out of these cells and replace it with distilled water then continue to charge them and see where the specific gravity goes what it will mean as I've said before is the batteries will last a lot 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 longer so let's do that so I've got a plastic apron on because it's just typical you start messing around with acid and you get holes in your trousers so let's get rid of the hydrometer, put it back in its little cubby hole. Luckily, in the past, I was given this, which is absolutely marvellous. And this draws the acid out. But if you haven't got anything else, you'll have to use a hydrometer. But it does tend to. Uh, mucky the inside of the glass and excess wear on the the bulb on the end but so you'll have to wash everything out so 
I'll just draw out as much as I can. This is now sitting on top of the plate between the separators. I think we're about there. Just a bit more. There we go. So that's very strong acid. I'll put that what to one side in the correct drum. Just in case we need to we've gone too far and we need to put a bit more back in. And I've taken out 400 millilitres. So now I'll replace it with some distilled water, which comes out of our dehumidifiers. There's distilled waters over a pound a litre, and when you're dealing with 50 or even more litres a year, it's an unnecessary expense. Plus, using a dehumidifier, as long as you're in a non-dusty environment, then I don't see anything wrong with using that water. Other people might do, but I don't. I think you've got to look at the whole picture. We are doing this, A, to reduce our carbon footprint, but also to reduce our um, demand on finances and therefore increase our self-reliance. So all we'll do now is we'll leave that, we'll do all the rest of these cells and then leave them for another week or two and come back and check them. Now for those people who uh, are not familiar, charging through the light bulb, if you go back and have a look at rewiring battery shed or something like that one of those videos what we're doing here we've got a 24 volt pack and we're charging it off the 48 volt pack through this light bulb so that's just a resistance and that light bulb is 60 watt at 50 volt and that charges at that rate at about a quarter of an amp so you can just leave that on and it just trickles the batteries away, hence it brought them up from uh, nearly, nearly sort of 11.25 right up to, I'm guessing now, about 1400 over three months. So hopefully that all makes sense. If you keep the specific gravity down when it's fully charged, keep it down to a, an acceptable level then your batteries are going to last a lot lot longer okay there's not so much capacity but the capacity of batteries and the amount of solar panels the more panels you've got effectively the less capacity you need in your batteries because you're charging every day within reason you know it's a rule of thumb but i always reckon there's no such thing as too many solar panels.